What's up guys, welcome to Mad About Cake. I'm your host, Joshua John Russell, and this week we're celebrating the house of Versace. I'm gonna build a three-tiered lemon cake with Italian meringue, mascarpone buttercream, and finished with classic Versace detailing. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna start by breaking down four six inch lemon cakes. This is so good, lemon cake is delicious. You uh, wanna send a frisbee a lemon cake over this way? I will. It's kind of a sad little frisbee, but we can do it. You ready? Yay! I'd have that guy play first base. Are you playing first base on Thursday? Yeah. We play on a softball team, but I only played once and we got smoked by a CrossFit gym. <laughs> Are you gonna play Thursday? Yeah, I'm on the list. I'm in the outfield because I like to pick flowers. <laughs> and every time they get the ball, they're always like, throw it to Brandon, right now! <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna clean up my crumbs and I'm gonna fill this guy with, what did I say we were filling him with? Al Capone buttercream. No, it's mascarpone. Italian meringue, mascarpone buttercream. Before I fill the cake, I'm gonna soak the layers with a little bit of simple syrup, which I have here, and some limoncello. How oh. you doing there, Joshua? Need some help? Ow. Yeah, use that blunt thing. There. Yes, there we go. Let me taste it. Mmm, lemony. New recipe, you know where they are. I above, description box below. While you're down there, hit subscribe. Wait, well, tell us about this recipe, what is it? It's so good, so it's Ita So I normally use Swiss meringue buttercream. This is an Italian meringue buttercream, obviously, because this is an Italian cake, Versace, Italian family. The end, I fold in mascarpone cheese. Oh, it's so good. It's what they make tiramisu out of. You guys wanna taste it? It's delicious. There you go, Tommy. Oh, it's so good. See, I told you. You guys better believe it's good. I can really taste the Italian and not the Swiss. Well, they are made differently. So a Swiss meringue buttercream, you actually take the egg whites and dissolve the sugar before you whip it. And then an Italian meringue buttercream, you take the sugar syrup that's boiling and you pour it into looking egg whites. So it's really light and fluffy. It's a completely different mouthfeel. Yeah, I can taste all of that. <laughs> I'm gonna take the first trip to the cooler and then we're gonna carve this into an ottoman shape. An ottoman? Ottoman. So when I was doing my research on the House of Versace, I was really inspired by the home collection. Um, and I saw this chair that was so, so awesome. It's black and it's really shiny. Um, and I'm making a cake and not a chair, so I thought I'd make sort of this ottoman shape and then we're gonna decorate it like the back of the chair. It's lots of texture on it. That's a fun shape, let's give it a crumb coat. So Joshua, you're a pretty big Donatello Versace fan? No, it's Donatella Versace. Yeah, it's that's what I said. not pronounced Versace, it's Versace. No, you said Donatello. Like the Ninja Turtle. Right, which is a Ninja Turtle and not a fashion icon. But there's also Michelangelo. There were two of them too. How many Raphaels were there? I think Raphael is a sculptor. Really? You're telling me that the entire Ninja Turtle crew was named after artists? Pretty much. That's the shtick. Ruined. So have you always been a fan or is it just because of the TV show? Uh, yeah, I've always been a fan, huge fan. I watch lots of fashion shows because I get inspiration from color stories and the movement of the clothes and texture and all that. Alexander McQueen is my favorite. I actually did a cake inspired by Alexander McQueen. Uh, we'll put a link so you guys can watch that. But no, I've always loved the work of the House of Versace. All right, that's pretty good for a rough crumb coat. We'll get her back in the cooler and we'll do a final coat. Now we're gonna cover the ottoman shaped cake in black fondant. I'm gonna roll this out with cornstarch, a little thicker than an eighth of an inch because I'm gonna cut in some texture. Did you guys watch American Crime Story by any chance? 
I haven't. <sighs> Don't ruin it for me, but did OJ do it? <laughs> yes, OJ's not in it, sorry. This one's about the assassination of Gianni Versace, and it is fantastically done. Do we know who assassinated him? Yeah, like, like everybody knows. All right, that feels, that feels about good. It's pretty close to an eighth of an inch, but it's a little bit thicker. Would you call it two eighths of an inch? Maybe. Three sixteenths I'm, of an inch? I'm gonna get my cake, you can figure that out. It looks like a Google HomePod. I got one of those things and it freaked me out. I walked into my house, turned the lights on, and it said, what can I do for you? And I was like, <laughs> you can play Florence and the Machine, and she did it. I listened to two songs and I put her in the drawer. She's very scary. <laughs> Hello, Joshua. I got out of the drawer. Oh God, don't. Don't do that. That's like nightmare for me. Okay, we gotta decorate it now. I'm gonna create some texture for this ottoman. I'm gonna space everything out using this little tool. It has little bitty teeth on it that are perfectly symmetrical. So I'll just go and poke in all the way around, and then I'll use this pokey tool and my dresden tool to get the actual texture. And we'll finish it with these little black beads, or those are like our buttons. You ready? Cool, and then we'll line it back up. So is this one of the techniques you got from fashion design? Yeah, I mean, this this came from like their home collection. It was a chair, really cool chair with like this really ornate gold armrests and legs. But I really love the texture and it had like these really big buttons. But I get a lot, a lot of inspiration from a lot of things. What's some other examples? Uh, lots of fashion, uh, lots of cooking. I mean, I even get inspiration from music. Inspiration is everywhere. Do you ever get inspiration from Brandon or Tommy? Nope. <laughs> Now we're gonna kind of open this all up. I want it to make, I want it to look like the button is pushed down and the fabric is kind of pulling. So I'll take my Dresden tool and I'll just make these little marks. And then the button will pop in there. So I'm gonna do all of these and then we'll shine spray it. Stop, 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 stop. Spit it out, Brandon. I ate it. Brandon, spit it out. For the final touch, I'm gonna do a stitch around the top and I'm gonna spray it with shine spray so it looks like leather. So shiny. Now we're gonna panel an eight inch tear using a cool technique with a stencil. Paneling? Yes, your favorite. For the bottom tier, we're gonna create a panel, but I'm actually gonna create the panel and then I'm going to paint over it. So I'm gonna roll this with my spacing bands so that it's completely even and they meet up. Got those guys. Roll it out a little bit. All right, I got my panel rolled out. I'm gonna get it onto a piece of cardboard because I'm gonna put it in the fridge after I do this technique so it firms up. And that way we can put it on gently to the side of the cake. So I've got my template here. If you look at sort of classic Versace design, their colors like this really bright yellow color, white, gold, and black. And all these crazy sort of patterns. So I found this damask and I think it would be really cool if I sort of alternate black and yellow, and then we'll put like a band around it. I'm gonna do this with confectioner's glaze and just a little tip, uh, save your fondant lid buckets because these are good palettes. Grab a little bit of this yellow is super pigmented, so I'm gonna go really light. Have you ever made a TV show based cake before? I did, I've made a few. The last one I made was for the reboot of the 80s show Dynasty. Oh, really? Yeah, it was really fun. So I had to make toppers. It was a bride and groom. And then the bride's head had to be able to be bitten off and chewed up. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. I love making cakes for TV shows. 
I would probably do The Simpsons. It'd be like a sculpted one. And then they would draw it and put it on the actual cartoon. Oh, I didn't even go there. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it would happen. That's what would happen. What about you guys? If you got to make a cake for a TV show, what would it be? Put it in the description box below. I want to hear. I would do a naked and afraid cake. No one here is surprised. Okay, now our stencil is good and cold. I'm going to peel it away, and then we're gonna cut it to a panel. We're gonna add some black bands to the top, bottom, and the side gaps. I'm using a little bit of mirror glaze on a paintbrush to get my bands to stick. All right, I'm gonna stack my final tier with bubble tea straws. All right, now I'm gonna pipe a couple of borders, let those dry, and then paint them gold. I'm gonna add a little bit of vodka to my gold dust to hydrate it. Our Versace inspired cake is complete and I think she turned out super chic. If you guys want loads of inspiration and wanna learn something new, check out Craftsy Unlimited. Everything's in the description box below. Next week, my whole family's gonna be here because we're gonna make my sister's 40th birthday cake. Let's cut this baby. Mm, I think Don Pella would approve. Cowabunga. Ready? Here she, here she goes. Let's go all the way down. That's just starting. Lights up. <laughs> this is Bethany rocking the cake outfit of 2019, designed by. And, then, and she moonwalks back. <laughs> the kids are being bad. This will calm them right down. No, you can't say that. Why not? It's funny. I don't have kids. I have nephews. <laughs> Uh, but I don't encourage them drinking, they're very young. Mom, can we have more silly cake? Can we have some of jo Uncle Josh's sleepy time cake? 